but also enforced breaks. And, and, and they're enforced breaks by the therapist, by the therapist going on holiday. Yeah. And that often evokes a morbid fear of abandonment, yeah. which lies within the troubled psyche of our clients. Yeah. Or at least made it. Yeah, un totally. And even just the time of year. <laughs> We demystify what goes on behind the therapy room door. Join us on this voyage of discovery and co-creative conversations. This is The Therapy Show, Behind Closed Doors podcast, with Bob Cook and Jackie Jones. Welcome back to episode 81 of The Therapy Show, Behind Closed Doors, with myself, Jackie Jones, and the ever-present, ever-effervescent Mr. Bob Cook. <laughs> <laughs> and what we're going to be talking about today, which is quite apt, is how to deal with holidays on this run up to Christmas. Yeah, I, I, I'm dyslexic, so I can't even say the word you said about me in your <laughs> description of it. But it sounded very um, delightful. Yes, I've just had uh, dentistry today. So, wow. Um, you know, I went an hour and a half in the actual dentist you know, dentist chair while they're preparing for uh, root canal work. So I have gone off the numbness of my, so I'll be able to speak. Good. Okay, so holidays, just before, of course, um, holiday time. Yes. So um, it can be quite a big deal and an intensive time for a lot of people, can't it? It certainly is. And according to in TA terminology, according to how much adult they've got, you know, in terms of resilience and robustness, will depend on how they may, I use the word in inverted commas, act out. Yeah. It's a psychological term. Uh, and TA might be go into script. Yeah. Um, uh, when you know, there's, there's holiday time and the therapist goes on holiday and um, how they then interpret that. Now, having said that, which I can want to talk about in a minute, I also want to talk about contracts in this stage because your TA is very, uh, contractual theory is very, you know, pivotal. In yes, yes. Yeah. So when you actually make the contract with your client at the beginning, in terms of a focus of what they want from the therapy, in the business contract, you will, I'm going to speak for myself, but I'm going to go over to you in a minute. We talk about holidays. Yes. So, for example, in contracts I made with my clients, I would talk about, you know, Christmas time, being off at Christmas time, you know, New Year, perhaps. And when I went on holiday. Yeah. So they would know how many holidays I have. Um, and um, they would be prepared for that at a certain level. And also, uh, specifically, the one up to Christmas, we can prepare them for that. But at the early stages of therapy, of course, there is a contractual process around holidays. Yeah. Is that the same with you? At the yeah. Yeah, and I think it's important <laughs> as, you know, therapists and counsellors that we take account of ourselves in that period, that, you know, we are entitled to have a holiday and to take a break. It's just about planning it. That's, you know, that's the important part. Yeah, I, I, now I've just said that a bit about contracts and yeah, that, that um, in the contractual process, client and therapist know when the holidays are yeah there is a process there at the beginning i'll go on to the next bit now about 12 years maybe 15 years ago a film came out which became a cult film and it's not a cult film because of my name because the actual film was called what about bob wow and i'm called bob you see so it didn't become a cult film because of that but um, it should have been. <laughs> what about Bob? It is a most wonderful film. It's a comedy. The most wonderful film. And uh, Bill Murray uh, from Groundhog fame. Yeah. Played the um, obsessive, compulsive, paranoid, 
um, schizophrenic, if you like, client. And the Richard Dreyfus played this narcissistic uh, American psychotherapist. Uh, Sounds good. And basically, um, how Bill Murray became, who played the, the client, became the patient of Richard Dreyfus, who was the psychiatrist, uh, psychotherapist over in America, uh, was that um, the client, i.e. Bill Murray, was so disturbed that a lot of the psychiatrists had given up with him and they turned to the very narcissistic therapist and said, can you help? And of course, he's extremely narcissistic, this therapist, and believes in cure everybody. So he took on Bill Murray. Now, what the story, I don't want to tell anybody the end of the story because, you know, it's still the story, but basically, over in America, of course, a uh, psychotherapist went on holiday the whole of August. They took the whole of August off generally in America. You have a whole month off. And um, the client, I, Bill Murray, um, uh, was told about this um, about three weeks before Richard Dreyfus took him on. And of course, he went straight into uh, paranoia and triggered his script and abandonment phobic and his OCD came out much more. And he felt abandoned by the therapist. Uh, so that was all going on. And then to cut to the next part of the film, which I, because I don't want to destroy this film for you, he followed Richard Dreyfus to his holiday home, oh. <laughs> and he invaded his therapist's home um, while he was having vacation. And all this is going on, and I'm not going to tell you the end. But this is really important in terms of what we're talking about, because clients have got a morbid fear of abandonment, even though they may have. From their adult understand the therapist has gone holiday can from child in inverted commas act out because they felt abandoned yeah and in this film the extreme consequence was the client followed the therapist on holiday and in fact engaged in uh the family of the uh the therapist and there's a lot more to the film but it's a very funny film. Please go and watch it. Um, I, I enjoy it. You can get it out on DVD. I'm sure it was 12, 15, 16 years ago. Um, but the, if we take the grain of truth about this, is um, the more disturbed the client is, especially borderline clients, in inverted commas, who have a morbid fear of abandonment, they may well act out in the therapy, you know, in the holiday yeah. time. So... The therapist needs to take this into consideration and with the client um, talk about um, the, you know, maybe the problems that might array, ar you know, arise and what the two of them are going to do about it. Yeah. <laughs> Which is a good idea because, you, you know, <laughs> planning and preparing and talking about it and bringing it into awareness is, is, is really useful, I think. Yes, and very, very important. Yeah, yeah. I always did this with clients. I was always very conscious um, uh, when I go on holiday, um, we we may call a, cause a um, rupture in the yeah. relationship between therapist and client. Um, and I wanted to make sure that we could work around that um, if that happened. Yeah. Um, now, if the client is going away for a whole month, which I never did, by the way. Um, it's a long time for a client to hold that, what we call object constancy. In other words, yeah. uh, keep the therapist uh, as a, a good enough object uh, in terms of safety and security. Um, a month's a long time. It is. Talking about a constant object, I've, I have known of, and I've not. it's not something I've done myself, but I have known for therapists to to give the client something mm. as a constant object. Do you know what I mean? Before right. there is a break, whether that's a holiday or whatever it is. What are your thoughts on that? I've done it myself. And I've also received it from when I was in therapy myself many decades ago. Um, my therapist went on holiday and gave me um, one of her 
uh, how can I explain this? One of her rings, I think it was, uh, in terms of um, <sighs> providing a bridge in the yeah. relationship. Um, so, and also as I was a therapist myself, I might give some sort of uh, concert object or something from my house to uh, provide that transformational experience. So if the client was having difficulties in um, their resilience or holding the adult place and they were moving to child and feeling abandoned or whatever it is, uh, they could look at the, the transition, transition object or yeah. uh, be able to hopefully uh, it would provide a bridge to hold the therapist in an okay position. Yeah. I just, I, like I said, it's not something that I've yeah. done personally, but I know that there are quite a few therapists that do do that. Yeah, they might give them many things like a favourite cushion of theirs. Yeah. Giving them a picture might give them, uh, 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 often, well, this is very common, to give a sort of, um, you know, I was thinking of these sort of gemstones. Yes, yeah. Crystals or something like that. Yeah. Where the client can take them out and they're very tactile. Um, yeah. They can feel it and they can remember the um, therapist's words or be able to help them keep yeah. therapeutic presence, even though the therapist is away. Yeah. Because it's, it's interesting. I think one of the <laughs> things that I've experienced you know, around holidays is that if the client is going on holiday, they seem to be okay with it. But if I go away for a week, then that kind of brings out up all the attachment issues of abandonment and everything, but not when they're going away. It's when I go away, yeah. which I find quite interesting. Oh, but, you, but you've got the magical powers. In other words, you're the secure object. Yeah. Yeah, and in transference terms, you're often the mother, the important sister, maybe even the father. Um, you're the secure person. So in transference terms, um, it's pretty straight. It's pretty logical that, that way around, not yeah. the other way around. <clears throat> because the therapy is with the idealised other, which is you in this place. So if you go away, that might bring out or trigger um, certainly ruptures in attachment, times where they feel neglected or abandoned by their mother, father, or significant other people. And and that's, in transfer terms, that's who you are. Yeah. Yeah. I just find it quite interesting, that, <clears throat> you know, the, the, way, the way that a week apart can be viewed through different lenses if that makes sense <laughs> whether it's them going away on holiday or whether it's them being abandoned by you but, uh, but it's just looking at it from a different perspective but the length of time and the being apart is exactly the same in both situations but it's how they perceive it yeah but if you're going away you're more likely to stay an adult you're not going to be triggered really because the therapist hasn't gone away. Therapist, you're choosing to go away. And you know the therapist is going to be there when you come back. Yeah. It's very different from a therapist leaving. Yeah. Because the client's not chosen the therapist to go. Yeah. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. But it's just how it's perceived, looking at it from a different perspective. You know, seven days is seven days. The length of time is the same. But one has much more impact on the client than the other one. Yeah. You're correct. And I think if we look at it in terms of ego states, then psychologically, perhaps we can see it differently because in terms of ego states, the client goes to the child. Yes. The yourself, if they get left. Yeah. Yeah. Or if they perceive it that way, as you said. Yeah. Which they will do, like you said, they don't have a say in it. It's not, you know, a decision that they're making to be left. It's it's a decision made by the therapist, and yeah. So uh, we brought the subject of transfers up. So usually, when a therapist chooses to go away, 
they will know that it might provoke a transferential process. Mm -hmm. And if it provokes a transferential process, and you'll know by the script of the client or the history of the client, then by definition, the child will move, sorry, the client will move to the child ego state. Yeah. And if they move to the child ego state, which is the younger self, that's usually where the trauma is. Mm -hmm. Or where the uh, abandoned, or where they felt abandoned or, or traumatized. So in terms of ego states uh, and transfers, then the clinical treatment makes sense. Yeah. The real key to this is preparation. Yeah. And the therapist is preparing with the client for this process. And also um, utilizing transformational objects or cons you know, sense of consistency, whatever we want to look at it, so that if the if the if it's too long or the client feels that they uh, are likely to act out in some way, they've got some sort of bridge in terms of a constant object to yeah. remind themselves that the therapist has gone away and is going to come back again. Yeah. See, coming back is the bit. So if the person moves to a younger self, especially if they're quite disturbed, they can lose sight that the therapist might come back because the history usually, or might be, one where they were left or neglected or abandoned, traumatized. Yeah. But significant that they didn't come back. Yeah. So they find it harder to hold in their heads the idea that they're just gonna come back. Yeah. Or if they did come back, everything had changed when they, they came back. You know, it's, it's that continuation you know and that first session after you've had a break can be very different to what it was before you you went away absolutely and there's a famous book written by uh paul patterson and i can't, i think the other person's name is margaret atwood they're attachment therapists and they wrote a book called separation of the young i think it was 1954 or something like that don't swear me on the action you know, year came out, but it, they're attachment therapists, and um, there's a lot of photographs, black and white photographs in this book, and one of them is of the mother taking their young child, who's seven, to um, hospital, and the, the you know the, the the young child was going to hospital for some reason, which was going to be about a week. Yeah. So walking into hospital, they were holding hands. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. When she went to fetch the uh, her daughter, and they came out again. They they weren't holding hands. So you're perfectly correct. Even though the mother went back after a week or whatever it is to collect the child, the child ha uh, hadn't felt, by the sense of this picture, able to trust the uh, mother enough to be able to attach to her again. Wow. So when the therapist comes back, the therapist needs to understand that things like you've just psychologically perhaps have changed and that the client will need to talk about the process to be able to attach back to any sense of secure attachment, hopefully that the person had before in the therapeutic process. Yeah. Now, if because, don't well, understand that, they yeah. don't understand the attachment process and ruptures in the attachment process that might well be caused by a holiday and Christmas is coming up. Yeah. If they don't understand that process and don't give credence to that process, they're much more likely to um, cause ruptures in the therapeutic process, which will become much harder to get back to where they were before yeah yeah because ruptures in our past however however they show up do you know what i mean it might be quite a normal 
process that a family is, is going through where one of the parents got has to go away whether it's through work or illness or whatever it is you know and the family gets over it but inside of us somewhere there's always going to be that little niggle that they're going to leave me so it can unearth an awful lot of hidden trauma that you know the client isn't even aware of absolutely and for most of us yourselves me and uh, you know yourself and most people um they haven't had the traumatic history of what i would call cumulative neglect yeah yeah uh and we can have a sense of resilience to be able to cope with uh you know a week's break or two weeks break um but the more fragile the adult or the resilience in the client and the more they've had a history of cumulative neglect and trauma yeah then a therapist going away for two weeks or a week means a completely different mm. process to what i'm talking about yeah what, you know you and me are talking about yeah and will by definition evoke things yeah the therapist needs to, I say, I'll repeat again, really needs to understand attachment theory, theory or at least understand some sense of what might be played out um, or a recreation of history for the client by the therapist um, taking Christmas off or something. Yeah, yeah. It needs to be really talked through psychologically, I think. Yeah. And again, you know, it, it is up to the the therapist and the client to to talk through certain things again you know i i have in the past if i've taken time off contracted that maybe we could have a 10 minute telephone conversation during the week Good. just to touch base or you know not that it's a free for all and they can form me at any point but it's contracted a time and a date for either a text message or a quick five minute phone call yes you know so th th there are ways around this as long as it's contracted and it's agreed beforehand i think that's that's the the key to a lot of this absolutely and with disturbed clients especially the so-called borderline clients uh they will attempt to push that boundary yeah yeah completely yeah <laughs> suddenly they're caught up in a uh, a particularly difficult situation so but on, on the whole you're correct yeah i think it's a it's a contractual process that can be worked out beforehand yeah yeah so there are there are things that we can we can do you, you know that, that's going to make it less of a, a rupture in the therapeutic relationship than you know just going away for a week or two you know, and like I said at the beginning, you know, the downside to that is that we are entitled to have a break and a holiday. We have a duty of care to the client, obviously, but we also need to, you know, the self-care and, and us recharging our own batteries and having time away too. Oh, absolutely. And we, in terms of this duty of care to the client framework, we need to think clinically about what, us going away may evoke yeah person's script in my experience nine times out of ten coming back after christmas and i'd always take two weeks off yeah um was never the same in other words what i mean by that whether it's individually or in a group clients um had to attach back to me yeah to be able to do work they needed to do and usually the first individually the first hour back or this group usually two hours was taken up not just talking about a holiday but you know working through a process of getting back to some semblance of attachment with the client yeah. and the client with the therapist yeah and being mindful of that and you know i don't want to say scheduling that first session in but having a, a process to go through in that first session in order that you can get back in the relationship I think is really important rather than just coming back in as like, acting as if everything's fine oh. and we're oh. just going to carry on where we left off type of thing that's right or ignoring the psychological significance yeah you know 
and I think therapists that do that um, will pay, pay the price, and also clients will. Yeah, will be you know because um, and the therapist says, "Oh, I don't know why that client left." I mean, we're doing such good work. I know Christmas came up, but you know, I don't understand. I, I, you know, I came back after Christmas, and three or four weeks later, the client handed their notice in. Yeah, or decided they wanted to leave, and I thought we're getting on fine. I, I really don't understand what happened, and I think that therapist doesn't or hasn't been given enough uh, emphasis on you know attachment theory, uh, or at least an understanding of that. Yeah, uh, which could evoke the process of termination with the client, you know, the client terminating therapy. Yeah, see, I, I often when I'm working with clients or whatever, I kind of put myself into a similar situation in my upbringing and how I felt and connect with that, which kind of makes me a bit more empathic towards the client. And I can remember when, you know, at school, particularly, you know, primary school, that at the end of the the term, so at the, the beginning of the Christmas holidays, everything was stripped out of the classroom you know, all the old displays on the wall, you and uh, you took everything home after that first term, so your little drawers were all empty, and you went back to this bare box. <laughs> and I can remember feeling really strange going back into that classroom, because it wasn't like the same classroom that I'd left just before mm. Christmas, if that makes sense. No, uh, a very good analogy. I mean... Um... For, for many clients who had very difficult histories, when the therapist's gone away and comes back in January in this case, it's almost like um, the world has changed. Yeah, yeah. Or could be like that. Yeah, and potentially that's how it feels. You know, you 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 aren't the same. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So it's really important preparation here. Yeah. And sometimes they need to know that they've been in your thoughts as well, which can be quite impactful for them, that you haven't just closed the door and not thought anything about them or your practice at all in the week or two that you've been gone. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, so you might, like you've said, arrange time to send them a text or... Yeah. Uh, this all has to be done within contractual process. Yes, really important. Yeah, yeah. Because, like you said, some clients will see a, a, a you know a gap in in the rules, and you know, yeah, it wouldn't be helpful for the relationship. It could be open to interpretation. Mm. Yeah. Uh, one way, or so, following up from your suggestion, um, when the therapist comes back. So when the therapist comes back in January after this Christmas break, um, I don't know if you're suggesting this, but um, I'll go with the way you're talking. Um, uh, are you saying that one idea would be for the therapist to talk about what's happened for themselves at Christmas and talk about what they did and put in yeah. that, let's say, you know, I was thinking about you and I know Christmas is an evocative time for you. And you were in my thoughts, and I'm glad I'm black, back now, so we can talk about, you know, what Christmas did bring up for you. Yeah, totally, and that's that's what I would do. Yeah, not just deny Christmas never happened. No, no, because it did, and I, I think you know it's an opportunity as well to. I don't want to say reparent, but you know, role model how we can have a break and not see each other and come back and be okay with that mm-hmm. and that I you know being consistent and if I say I'm coming back I'm gonna come back and you know just model a different behavior to a client mm. no I think that's really important what you've just said there that you're modeling a different behavior from the person's history yeah because you you know the festivities and Christmas is going to happen every year, and you know the summer period is going to happen every year, and and there are going to be times where there might be a rupture in relationships, and trusting the other person when they say, "I will be back," is is really important. It's very important, I think, as well as preparation. It's really important for the therapist to think developmentally. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. And make inquiries about how Christmas was for their clients in a, at a different younger time. Yeah. Because a lot of clients actually um, express back they don't enjoy Christmas. And when you say, well, how, how can we don't enjoy Christmas? They talk about their history. Yeah. And how Christmas perhaps was such a dreadful time for them. Maybe they had parents always argued, or maybe they had parents which didn't like to be uh, at home with each other. Maybe they had parents who would get drunk uh, mm -hmm. at Christmas. Maybe they had parents who actually hadn't got enough money to ever give them presents. Perhaps they had parents which um, went off themselves for two weeks and had big clients in the house. Yeah. Uh, maybe Christmas is a very traumatic time and I think that needs to be all talked about because we must not assume that Christmas is an okay time for somebody, yeah. but, uh, particularly from their history. 100%. And I, I think, you know, statistically, I think the likelihood is that a lot, a lot more people find it stressful and, you know, emotional and all those sort of things rather than it being like the picture postcard or like it is in the films i think the majority of us have experienced some distress or something around christmas time mm. yeah and, you know the statistics will tell you that uh new year's eve is the time when there's more suicides mm. secondly christmas yeah and we know that christmas uh, will bring up a lot of things for people but also enforced breaks and, and, and they're enforced breaks by the therapist, by the therapist going on holiday. Yeah. And that often evokes a morbid fear of abandonment. Yeah. Which lies within the troubled psyche of our clients. Yeah. Or at least made it. Yeah, un totally. And even just the time of year, do you know what I mean? Statistic, I don't know whether it's just me or not, but you know, over over the summer period when there's, you know, the days are longer and the sun is shining, I get a lot less people wanting therapy. Whereas as soon as the clocks go back and the nights are drawing in and everything else, I tend to get busier over the winter months. You know. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So definitely. it does have a bearing on, on how we're feeling. Yeah. Yeah. So if we go back to holidays in the summer, for example, or on the Easter, for example, uh, I know there's Christmas as well. I've got an added uh, sense of a vacation there. But you really usually, what's underneath all this is the client who's had a neglected history. Yeah. Had ruptures in an important attachment system, which gets evoked by the therapist going on all day. Yeah. And that needs to be discussed. There needs to be a preparation there needs to be contractual thinking and maybe the importance of um, transform transformational objects um, to bridge the gap so the client can realize the therapist is coming back and can hold yeah. the therapist um, these sorts of ways of thinking developmentally i think are really important when we think about holidays with clients yeah and, you know, I know you're, you, you've you said, and I completely agree, you know, it's contracted in the beginning, do you know what I mean? That well, around bank holidays or, you know, whatever, that there's going to be holidays. But when we say, you know, talking about it and discussing it prior to it, it's not just the week before, you know, oh, remember, I'm not here next week. They, they, no. We're talking no. You know, dipping in and out throughout the year, no. touching on this if 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 anything's coming up and a month before yeah. the planning and the preparation for having that week off. Yeah. I couldn't agree more. You know, I remember clients that I took on board, but I knew this from the beginning. Um, you know, uh, uh it was a holiday, a summer holiday, and um the mother went off and uh she didn't come back. You know, she had an accident, and so that the holidays, uh, in the sense of what we're talking about now, uh, with the therapist going away, yeah, would bring up so much. So, if you can talk 
to the client way before and you know their history, yeah, then you can prepare ahead. Yeah. And for me as well, I always found it okay or I, I was comfortable with asking the client what it is that they needed or they felt they would need, you know, rather than making assumptions or me presuming I can give them a crystal off my cupboard and they'll be absolutely fine. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Asking the client, you know, what is it that you feel like you, you would need from me during that week? Or is there anything that we can plan together that's going to make it easier for you or whatever it is? Yeah, and that shows that you're thinking about the client, you're taking account of their history. Uh, and those things are so important, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I think that's been really helpful for this time of year because... You know, we we will want to have family time on our own with our own family, but you know, the, there is always that that relationship that we need to be mindful of in, in the work situation. Yeah, yeah, and to be mindful of when we come back to our clients to inquire and take account of what's what they've been up to and what it's been like for them. Yeah. Not just assume they've had a good old jolly time. Yeah. To 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 think developmentally here. Yeah. And I think, you know, I don't, I'm not sure whether it was the last podcast or the one before then about, you know, relational needs, you know, the need for the other to initiate. So mm -hmm. for us to bring up that conversation and inquire about them and their life and how has it been for them, you know, that's a good starter for coming back into the, the therapeutic relationship and, and making that connection again. Yeah, absolutely. And also think about time. Yeah. In other words, it might take time for them to attach back again. Yeah. After the break. Yeah, yeah. It will be aided by the sort of process you've just talked about between yeah. the therapist and the client. And also, you know, what, what you touched on, be mindful of the fact that, that you know the the disruption might be that much that the client doesn't come back well you know that's a very important one to think about and then what you do yeah next yes yeah i mean maybe that's for another podcast but it is an important one yeah when clients just suddenly leave and of course they never suddenly just leave no no <laughs> If you think about it clinically enough, you will and put it in context, you'll get some understanding. Yes, yeah. And I, I think that is something, you know, I'm, I'm going to write that down, I think, because I think it is a good topic. You know, if a client leaves, what do we do? <laughs> do we make contact? And if so, how many and how? And, you know, yeah, absolutely. Another good part, part you know, another good podcast off the back of this sometime would be about the use of transitional objects. Yeah. In the therapeutic process. Yeah. But very important in uh, the conversations you've had about holidays. Yeah. So thank you, Bob. And yeah, following welcome. on from say again. Welcome. Okay, yes. <laughs> in terms of, <laughs> well, terms of the conversation we just had, I mean. Yes, but following on from this one, well, what we're going to be doing in the next one, I think it's quite apt, is we're going to be looking at attachment styles, which I know yeah. we kind of touched on in this one. Um, so, yeah, it might be useful to learn a little bit more about those. Absolutely, and it really follows on from this podcast. Yeah. This is the last podcast then of the year. It is, yeah. It's nearly New Year. It's nearly 2023. Well, I have enjoyed this year podcast immensely. Me so thank too. You very much. Well, I think. Do you think we've aged a bit? Well, every day we age a bit. But do you think? <laughs> do you think in the last year we've aged a lot? Well, I I think the podcast has podcasts have actually invigorated me. Uh, there's been lots of stresses throughout the year, so I think I've probably aged a bit more this year, but for other reasons, not because of the podcast. Yeah. And, you know, rounding 2022 up, I think it, it would be nice, you know, and I would just like to say thank you for the, everybody that's following us, whether that's on 
you know, the, the podcast listening or whether it's watching the YouTube videos. And we do look at the comments and, it, you know, we, we do a bit of a thing before we come on about how many people have actually listened to it. And it, 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 it does, it's nice to know that there's people out there that are listening to the podcast. And while you do that, we will keep making them. Mm. Agreed and have a good Christmas. Yes. And, you know, New Year, here it comes. Yeah, yeah. So okay. until next time, Bob, thank you. Yeah, bye-bye. Bye. You've been listening to The Therapy Show, Behind Closed Doors podcast. We hope you enjoyed the show. Don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review. We'll be back next week with another episode. <laughs>